welcome on our STM32 Cube IDE Basics training session. In this part, I would like to demonstrate to you some basic components concerning project management within the workspace, how the projects are organized, how to switch between them, how to switch to different workspace, what are the key features and which can help uh, you on day-by-day -day development. So the objectives. Uh, we will demonstrate how to manage the projects within stm 32 cube IDE. Uh, we will explore some project settings, basic ones, where to find the ma main most important ones. I would like to demonstrate to you how to share the project with uh, others uh, using import-export features, how to switch to another, another uh, workspace and uh, how to restore some default settings by resetting the perspective. So let's start uh, from the beginning. Projects. Within STM32 Cube ID, as it is an Eclipse based uh, environment, we are working on a workspace which can contain one or more uh, pr projects. Within the workspace, we can perform some basic operation on the projects. We can switch, with, switch between them, we can make them active or disactive, we can close project, we can delete the project, we can delete the project as well from the file system. So all of those features are uh, available. Let's start uh, with uh, the basic uh, concept, uh, project opening, project closing. As I told you before, uh, only one project can be active at the moment but uh, many of the projects can be opened. There is a big risk that uh, if you have opened uh, more than one project and uh, from each project you've got opened some files, it can be difficult uh, to, um, to manage it. Uh, it, can, it may happen that uh, you will edit some files uh, from the project which is not currently active it can create some mess. This is why there is a good feature within uh, Eclipse and it is available as well within stm 32 cube ID, uh, which is um, closing and opening the projects, the feature to, to, uh, which allows you to close and open the project. On the left part of the screen you can see the example of the workspace which contains uh, seven projects. Uh, one of those is open. This G0 LED uh, is open. Uh, to close this project, it is enough uh, to click on its name, then um, click the uh, right uh, button on mouse and select Close Project. In this case, uh, you will see the situation like on the, in the middle of the screen that all projects are closed. Uh, to open the project, it's enough to double click of the, on the name of the project and then it becomes an o open and uh, in the same time active. What is good is that once you click, uh, when you close the project, all open uh, opened files which are related to this project are closed automatically. Here you can see it on the screen that we've got the main.c and the IOC file related uh, to G0 LED opened. Once you select the close of this of this project, those files are closed as well. Here is a more difficult example uh, when we've got uh, three main.c files opened in the same time from different projects and we've got uh, seven open projects at the same at the same time of course only one is active but sometimes it's quite difficult to change to check which one or which main.c file uh, is uh, for which uh, project uh, just to to make uh, to make an order of it uh, we are selecting one project just clicking on its name then we are pressing the right button on mouse and we are selecting close unrelated projects all other are projects which are not uh, uh, this g0 underscore led are closed automatically together with all files related to those projects only one main.c remains related to this g0 underscore led and uh, we can continue uh, the development to switch between, between the project is quite easy with an Eclipse and uh, stm 32 cube IDE. It is just enough to click uh, with the left button on mouse uh, on the project we would like to make active and uh, there will be automatic switch from one project to uh, the other. How to check the properties of the, of the project? Uh, it is enough to highlight its name 
So we click on its name, then we click on the right uh, button on mouse and select from the bottom of the of the menu properties. In this case, a new window would pop up with title properties for and name of the project. In our case, G0 underscore LED. And uh, within this window, we've got uh, all the settings available uh, for the project. Within CC++ build, uh, we can select, for example, uh, configure the, enable the parallel build of the application. Uh, so in case you've got a uh, stronger PC, uh, stronger uh, multi-core CPU, you can you can select uh, the enable parallel build and, uh, uh, for example, use optimal jobs, which are optimal for your uh, for your application. Uh, then uh, within uh, C++ build settings, uh, you've got all uh, important settings concerning the tools which we are using to uh, generate uh, generate the code. So uh, starting from the MCU settings, um, you can select the floating point unit which is used, instruction set which is used, runtime library, um, which is very important because, because it allows you to reduce the code which you would be used by the, your application if you are not using all the features uh, from the, uh, the, the, the standard libraries. You can select, for example, Nano Library, which is much smaller and uh, will not uh, increase the code of your project uh, drastically. So this is the uh, MCU uh, settings. Then, uh, from the next option, MCU Post Build Outputs, you can uh, select what kind of output files you would like to have uh, as a result of the build. Uh, of the of the project, so we can uh, generate binaries, uh, hexadecimal uh, hex, hex files, or uh, Motorola um, as uh, Motorola S files. So those are the options. So you can as well uh, display information about the size of generated code, and uh, you can select or unselect the uh, generation of the list file. Within tool settings, you can configure as well assembler, C compiler and uh, linker which is used to build your application. So this is the place when you can specify the optimization level, you can specify uh, some additional definitions which are used uh, within the preprocessor, you can specify some additional include paths um, or some other components which are uh, used by the compiler or linker or assembler. If you would like to share the project with others or uh, just uh, store the project uh, in some external repository, we can do it using export uh, option, which is uh, uh, as well the, the feature of the Eclipse environment. To do this, uh, we will need to go within the workspace to File Export. As a result, uh, we will see an export window. From this, uh, we need to select uh, from General uh, section either archive file, if you would like to store our project in a compressed form, zip or tar, uh, or file system, if you would like to store the project uh, in some folder. I will demonstrate the, the feature with archive file of zip, so general archive file. Then uh, window will change and it will display or available, I mean opened, uh, projects with an active uh, workspace. In our case, uh, we've got uh, seven of them. Uh, we can select which projects we would like to export into the file. And then we need to specify the ERHA file. This is this window below. We need to press Browse and select the ERHA name. Uh, then we need to specify what would be the format. It can be zip, it can be tar. Um, I would use zip uh, a zip file, and then once you do all those operation operations, you need to press finish. Having this zip file, you can share it within uh, other mem team members uh, from your from your team, and it would be possible to import it, import it uh, from different uh, uh, workspace. To import the file uh, in within the workspace, you need to. Uh, to go to File Import option, and from General you can select uh, what would you would you like to import. 
uh, within STM32Cube IDE, you have an option to import an ARHA file, existing projects into workspace, so the Cube IDE uh, projects, uh, file system, import uh, AC6 system workbench for STM32 projects or Atolic True Studio project. In our case, we will try to import the same file we have just exported. Uh, so we'll select general existing project into workspace. Uh, then we need to select either root directory if the project is stored as a file folder and not, uh, not a zip or uh, if it's uh, select if it's uh, stored in the archive file we need to select this select archive file and browse it. I can select interesting projects for me and then press the finish button. As a result all of the projects are popping up in my active uh, workspace. Another, another thing uh, which is quite convenient within uh, stm 32 cube ID, it's coming from Eclipse, it's uh, switching the workspaces. Uh, we can imagine the situation that we are working on several projects or several workspaces and uh, to switch between them uh, it's quite easy. It's uh, just enough to go to file and switch workspace and um, as a result you can see the list of recently used workspaces and the option Other, which allows you to uh, select a different location of the workspace, which is already existing. Another important point, uh, once you're working with uh, stm 32 cube ID, um, is a perspective management. The perspective uh, is a set of windows uh, which are used uh, in the current uh, step of the, of the development. Um, we can have uh, three main perspectives uh, within stm 32 cube ID. The uh, first one is uh, device device configuration, which is very similar. In fact, it's based on stm 32 cube mix uh, device configurator. The second one is a CC++ perspective, which is used to code development, its compilation, its build. Uh, and uh, the third one is a debug configuration, which is used for the uh, debug purposes. It might happen that uh, once you are working on a, the configuration, on the, we are working on a perspective. You close uh, too many, you close too many, too many windows. Uh, change uh, the, the, the configuration in such a way that uh, not everything is visible. Uh, it is easy to restore the default perspective view uh, from from the from the application by using window perspective reset perspective option. Uh, which would uh, restore the perspective view to its default uh, configuration. In this part, I would like to demonstrate projects management within stm 32 cube IDE. So the first thing uh, I would like to demonstrate how we can manage projects within stm 32 cube IDE workspace. Then we will explore, explore a bit uh, project settings and I will demonstrate how to uh, share the projects with others using import-export features and um, some additional points, uh, some additional features which can be uh, useful during your um, project development. Let's uh, switch to the workspace. I would use uh, for this demonstration purposes one of the existing uh, workspace. Uh, it contains all of the hands-ons uh, which uh, are prepared for this uh, cube ID uh, basic sessions. You can find them in the training materials in the zip file as well. So we can you can uh, duplicate. Uh, here on the workspace you can see several projects. Uh, all of them are closed at the moment. Uh, to open the project it is just enough to double click on it. I just double click on this G0 underscore XTI. This project uh, became opened and active. Active means that if I would uh, uh, press on it, I would press on the hammer, uh, only this project would be built. Important point is that active uh, open project uh, can be exported later on. All closed project closed projects are not handled uh, within export operation, which we'll discuss a bit later on. To close the project, we need to click 
the right button on mouse and select close project. Important point is that when you close the project, you are closing all the files related to this project. I will demonstrate now this feature, just opening a few files, a few projects. I opened three main.c files from different projects. Uh, it is creating, uh, it could create some problems during our development. What we can do uh, here, we can use this close project feature. Uh, let's assume the situation that we would like to continue development on G0 underscore PWM project. What I can do, I can just click right uh, on right button on mouse and select close unrelated projects. Please have a look uh, what it will be done. All the, pro all the other projects has been closed and all the files related to those projects are closed as well. Only main.c file from g0 underscore pwm file is opened and can be edited. To delete the project, uh, we just need to delete, uh, click on the, on the project and press delete. It will be deleted from the workspace. But to delete the project, we just need to either click on right button on mouse and select delete or just select the, the project and press delete button. Um, if we just click OK, the project would be deleted from the workspace without, uh, and it will be not deleted from the file system. We can as well uh, select this delete project content on disk, and then the project would be deleted physically from the disk. We'll skip this process, um, and now we will focus for a while on the project properties. If we select the active project, in our case, it will be G0PWM. I press the right button on mouse and select the last option, last position from the menu. It is Properties. A new window will be displayed on the screen. Its title is Properties for and name of the project, in our case, G0 underscore PWM. Within this uh, window, we can perform some uh, configuration of the, of the project, uh, starting from uh, selection how the build process should be done. If we are using multi-core uh, um, PC, we can select enable parallel build and uh, select the number of the jobs which can be done build process in parallel. So in, the, in my case it will be four uh, jobs in parallel done during the build process. So this is the, the, the first point. Then within the settings uh, Next option I would like to discuss is uh, settings within the CC++ build. Uh, here, in uh, tool settings, we've got complete set of the parameters used by the uh, assembler, compiler, linker, but as well uh, you can find here some settings about the MCU or post-build op uh, options which can be useful for your development. Within the MCU settings, you can select the floating point unit which is used in your application, you can select the instruction set or runtime library. The sliced option is very uh, important uh, point because you can select the reduced C uh, library or standard C library. The difference is that uh, in a reduced C libraries uh, you have uh, reduced functionality, reduced uh, number of the functions or simplified functions but the size of the standard library is much, much smaller, so the application in the final build will be smaller. So this is the first important point. The second option, MCU post build outputs, allows you to select what kind of output files you will have after build of your application. You can have a binary file, Intel hex file, Motorola S record file, or Verilog file. So you can select it. Uh, you can select more than one. Uh, you can uh, select as well to display information about the size uh, of the build uh, project. It is done by default. And you can select on unselect generation of the list file. Then you have uh, three my big sections uh, concerning assembler, C compiler and linker. Uh, within those sections you can set some additional settings for those components 
uh, most important ones are within the C compiler. So, for example, you can select the optimization level, which is by default none, so zero. Um, you can uh, modify the include paths, you can add something something new, you can add some defined symbols within the preprocessor, you can specify the debug level from none to maximum uh, with the number of the information which would be generated during the debug uh, session, available during the debug session. Uh, those are the main uh, settings which are available for the projects. Of course, there are much more than than this, but uh, for the complete set, you can you can refer to the to the manual uh, for the for this for this tool. Next point I would like to discuss uh, in this in this section is um, about um, the comfort of work with this within this environment. So what we can see right now on the screen is so-called C++ perspective. It is slightly modified by myself. So I already closed some windows. I can close more. Um, and uh, it might happen that during your development you click too much, uh, you closed too much windows and uh, you don't know how to come back to the default state. For this uh, you can go to Window, Perspective, Reset Perspective. Yes, and now, as a as a result, current perspective will come back to its default default settings. Another thing I would like to demonstrate to you is to how to export and import projects within the workspace. In our current workspace, we've got two open projects; the rest are closed. So let's uh, select the export option. So I go I will go File, Export. I can select uh, either archive file or file system or preferences. File system uh, will store the project uh, within its uh, within the separate folder of the folder structure, which is present in the in the project. I would select the archive file, which allow me to store everything in one single file, uh, either zipped or uh, tar format. I press next. As you can see, only active, only open, uh, sorry, only open projects are uh, available to be exported. I can select which of those I would like to export uh, to the archive file. It can be in zip format, it can be in tar format. I would select zip, I would put it on the desktop. And now if I would go to the desktop, I can see uh, one zip file with the those two projects. It is possible as well to export a particular project from the workspace. I just click on the project, make it active, then I click the right button on mouse and select export. And again, I have file, next, by default there is only one selection of the file which I clicked on and I can continue with uh, exporting it to the uh, to separate file, let's call it like this, and finish. Okay, let's try to make an opposite operation. So I would uh, switch to different workspace, to new one. So I would go to File, Switch Workspace, Other, and I would call it Cube IDE 5. It takes some time. The cube IDE is restarting. Okay, it's it's restarting within new workspace cube IDE five, which we can see here on top. Um, we'll close this information center, or I can click import project. As I exported all the projects within the zip file, I would use as an import source archive. I will go to desktop and I would select the first file, MOOC1. You remember there were, in fact, uh, two projects. I can click Finish. And I can see both projects on the screen. We can open previously exported projects a bit differently. Let me delete those two uh, projects from this workspace. So I will delete it one by one. 
Okay, and now uh, I would select from the file open projects from the file system. Again, I will select R half, R half, and select MOOC one. Yes, and you see the effect is exactly the same. Thank you for watching this video.